mid-July and the sun's beating down on southwest France. Over the past year, John Burton Race and his family have been building up a rich store of memories they'll treasure forever. Get the net, Charlie. For a small guy, it's real smart. John's cooked for his family, which he never had time for in England. Charles, eat this, I'll give you a euro. And weaned them off junk food. <laughs> Charles, please. Straight in, right, go. He's cooked with his family. So how many points were there? How many points? And despite the heat in his kitchen, they've all grown closer. Well done. John's explored the food of the Languedoc region. Catch of the day. They've all won many new friends. And he's rekindled his passion both in and out of the kitchen. But now it's the last week of their French leave, and they've all got mixed feelings about going. This is proper, the trek, pink garlic, look at them. John takes Martha and Olivia to the nearby farm of Serge Montel for a rare chance to get up close and personal with that very French ingredient and scourge of fresh breath, garlic. I don't think it's wrong. I know it's wrong. Easy, come on. But John's got a shock in store for the girls. Right, the surprise for you girls, you see this stuff in the barn here? Yeah. Hanging up. Mm hmm And you know you wanted to earn some pocket money. Mm-hmm. Well... That's an evil smile. Sergi's uncle, who's just over there, has got a little job for you both. It pays 30 pence a kilo. <laughs> Put it this way, you could earn thousands of pounds if you do all these this afternoon. Listen to what Roger says, mm -hmm. and I expect by the time I get back for half of this barn to be done, OK? This district, the Pays de Cocagne, is world famous for its garlic, graded much like wine with an appellation contrôlé. The very best gets a red label. It's all sold in bunches called manouille. While the girls try to earn some big money pruning garlic, their dad takes on a trickier task, helped by the experts. There's two types. The La Barre Rouge, clearly marked with a red label, is the very best. Everything's of uniform size, uniform quality, and this gets the La Barre Rouge. Something that's still good, it's still a good product, but they're all different sizes, all different colours, and they have this brûlée effect. And this is caused by the garlic getting wet. This is too quick to watch, I mean... And he makes it look so easy, and I'm just going to make such a mess of this. I'm just putting in the garlic and weighing the thing up to um, a kilogram, because that's the most important thing. One thing you mustn't do is shortchange your customers. Huh? The... Choisissez les plus petits. Il faut commencer par le plus petit. Vous commencez par le droit là, c'est très bon. Bon, c'est bon, c'est pas mal. Ça va? Elle monte le long là. Oui. La tenir bien comme il faut. Oui. Là, là. You've got to tie these really, really tight, and only one turn. Voilà. And Un tour. the thing I've noticed already. Et puis vous tournez un peu. À celui-là, vous avez. Is it's heavy work on your thumb? Comme ça? Voilà. Et c'est exact. Vous coupez la ficelle et après vous coupez le, la tige. There you go. Voilà. Bien, not bien. quite as good as Serge's, but not bad. C'est pas mal. C'est très bien. On va vous garder. Bien, 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 bien. Ouais, c'est pas mal. Oh, oui. Hey. Voilà. And there you got it. The best garlic in the world. Le Trek Red Labeled, tied by John Burton Race, a prize winner. If ever I saw it. Merci, Serge. C'est très bien. Formidable. Hein? Formidable. Merci, Marcel. Au revoir. Ah, oh, money as well. <laughs> you spoiled. You really are spoiled. Allez, merci, Allez. hein. Merci. Serge, merci beaucoup. Allez, au revoir. Au revoir. Come, girls. So, what did you think of your garlic experience, then? I, th I thought it was good, but personally, I think five euros is a little bit A little what? A little... Five yes. euros is a lot of money, Olivia. That's three pounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Three pounds. <laughs> That's 50p an hour. You don't deserve it. Your first taste of hard work, and all I get is moans and groans. Back home, 
One for the record books. Without being asked, Eve's made lunch for the entire family. Over the meal, they refine their plans for leaving France in style by holding one last supper for all their closest French friends. Do you want to invite us now? No, they might be too slow in coming, Charles. Get it? In one way, I'm looking forward to going home, but then I feel quite sad about leaving, you know, the friends that we've made over here. That's going to be hard. I suppose when we first arrived, it was sort of like, couldn't wait to get home. I think really the last six months we've enjoyed so much of it. And yeah, it's going to be tough, really, I suppose, leaving. With so much good garlic about, John decides to make it a big feature of the menu for the feast. It's July the 18th, the first market day for garlic, and he quits packing to head off with Charles to what's probably the best garlic market in the world. I think we're getting there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think so. For centuries, the Marché de la Rose has been held here in the medieval village of Lautrec. The ancient traditions are still binding. The famous Lautrec pink garlic can only be traded for one hour. Trading starts and ends at the blow of a whistle. There goes the whistle, Charles. Ready? We have garlic. Look, they're all starting to bite now, look. It's a car like mine. Yes, I think it. Look how much they've got in there. Yeah. John meets Jacqueline Bart, who farms, sells, and cooks top quality garlic. Charles, do you want to get down a bit? You're a bit heavy. That is very precious stuff. If we touch that, we might get arrested. Uh, I've been told straight, this is definitely the best garlic in the world. I said, well, it doesn't smell like it. He said, well, it's not a, it's not a bloody melon. Eager for some cooking tips, John sets out for Jacqueline's house. Like many cooks in the region, she uses garlic as a flavouring and as a food in its own right. The top chef's about to learn the art of the tartalai, garlic pie. But Charles, Charles are you coming? is less keen. You mean no? Come on, you twaddle. Charles? Well, I suppose garlic is the single most important ingredient in French co cooking, actually. Uh, but this is a special type of garlic. This is Lautrec garlic. It has a lovely pink colour, and it comes from here in the southwest. But I never understood why it was pink. And Jacqueline said it's the c'est la terre, non? La terre it's the soil that, that determines the colour. Le, le tarte, le, le, le flan, c'est quoi? Alors, on va commencer par mélanger des pignons de, de pain, oui. de pin. Okay, this garlic, um, this garlic pie is just chopped pine kernels, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, some butter, and lots of garlic. Vous mettez quoi, quoi, tout ça dans le... Sept grains d'ail. Sept. So, seven garlic cloves. It's like a garlic quiche, I suppose, and the nuts, obviously, are some, is to give it a bit of texture. It's a local speciality dish, and it's a great way of showing off their, their lovely garlic. C'est assez fin? Très bien. L'ail, le parmesan oui. et le beurre coupé en petits morceaux. Oui. Et maintenant, on va ajouter les pignons. Not, not a difficult recipe, but it's, you know, Vous allez voir, nice ça... one. C'est pas difficile, hein? Non, c'est très simple. Le fromage parmesan, c'est pas, euh, pas français. C'est pas français, c'est... Non. non. Parmesan cheese doesn't strike me as being particularly French. He said, no, but we need something that's quite strong flavoured to give it something else, because the garlic would overpower the whole pie otherwise. And I was just wondering if we could use something more local from the Auvergne, like a Contel or a Laiol. And voilà. She said that would be a very good idea. Je peux mettre le, les oeufs dans Oh, oui. Trois oeufs. Trois. Trois. Right, so it's just three eggs and 20 centilitres of um, fresh cream. Nice. And this is why it's like very much like a quiche. Two Et generous quoi, pieces of sea salt. Voilà. Alors on va étaler la pâte, voilà. You've got to spread this out like a sort of pâté first, on the base of the pastry, and then pour the cream on top. So there's probably a little bit more to it than I actually thought. Bon. Et Jacqueline, combien de minutes dans la 40 minutes, 40 minutes au four, Et à thermostat uh, à 170 degrés. 40 minutes at about 170, sort of a long, slow cook. C'est fini. C'est fini. Tout. On attend. Like his father, Charles is keen to experiment with garlic. Chou. Oui. 
Yes. Here in garlic country, the French like to go the whole hog and consume in a few mouthfuls what would be a few months' supply in many English kitchens. Fleur d'ail just means a garlic flower, and as you can see, it looks like the set, there's the sort of centre bud and all these little... It looks like a flower. Jacqueline's just cutting off the very tips, the very points of the garlic cloves. There's a little bit of um, sea salt sprinkled on each clove. And then a little bit of um, olive oil in the oven and they're just roasted tender. Tradition demands that the tartalai is served together with a bottle of chilled rosé. Cheers. Cheers, I'm going to miss this place. The people just open their doors, open their memories, showed me what they've got. I don't think you'd ever get that anywhere else. You just wouldn't. I mean, here, the hospitality, the generosity has been second to none. And this is soft, it's almost, and buttery. It's almost like, um, it's a common pomme purée. Oui, voilà, it's like ça a fait mashed purée. potato. Really delicious. Rain, you taste that. Sure. Straight in, sure, go. <laughs> With only a couple of days to go till they leave for England, the whole family are packing their prized possessions. I stepped on something. I've got you. I've got you! Oh dear, look at that. Charles? You're not trying to pack the ducks, are you? No. I'm not. Because you know, you know they're going to go to a good home. Yeah. Come on, Charles. Do you know he's going to look after them for you? I don't care. He's, he said he'd look after them. I don't care. Why? Uh. I know you're sad with them going, but Michelle's going to look after them. Okay. Bonjour, Milia. Bonjour, Charles. Coucou. Charlie. Are you sad? You're Very sad. sad. Wow. Poor old duck. I thought about it long and hard, and I thought, well, if we give them to a farmer, <laughs> it's for sure that they'll end up chopped. You're not going to help? No. So I've got hold of Michelle and I made him promise, we've got a gentleman's agreement, that they'll just live a long, slow, happy life on the hill over there and they'll never end up at a someone's dinner. Oh, you a duck. The only problem is that Michelle really does love his castle. The farewell parties tonight. The packing stops and everyone mucks in to help prepare the big meal. Potatoes, Olivia and Eliza. She never worked with children or animals. Beans, Kim, Charles and Amelia. Dad said there was a prize for the person who picked the most beans. Get, take your feet out now. On the menu, regional favourites broad bean ragu, leg of lamb roasted with pink Lautrec garlic and pomme boulangère. You carry on peeling and I'll go and get the lamb in. That's right. Bye. We got your food. So it's just four onions, a little bit of olive oil, hot pan, um, some fresh thyme, a whole bay leaf, and a big knob of butter, about 50 grams. While they're cooking, just one clove of garlic, just roughly chopped into the onions. They're getting a lovely golden colour now. Roughly chopped parsley, off the flame. We don't want to cook the parsley. Now, the potatoes. Throw in the first layer. A few onions, along with the parsley and the thyme and the, and the lovely bay leaf. A little bit of sea salt. It's, it's very straightforward. It's just a question of building up the, um, the layers so that you get onions, garlic and all the herbs in between all of the potatoes. Another layer of potatoes. A light summer version of that hearty winter dish, gratin dauphinois, the pomme boulangère should go nicely with the garlic-flavoured lamb. The top layer is slightly, slightly more decorative and more neat than the, the other layers. And just press it down a little bit, just gently cover the potatoes with this chicken stock. To get a lovely golden crust, some more lovely farmhouse butter. 
just break it up into little bits. There you go, pomme boulangere, in the oven for about 40 minutes. It's a typical summer evening at home at La Garrigue, just the kind John and his family have become used to. The guests start to arrive. Bonjour. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. Ça va bien, merci. Uh, Roger, ça va. Et le pastis? Vous oubliez le pastis? Many of them are friends John's made during his year of French leave, reminding him of all the special experiences he's had thanks to the people of Languedoc. All come bearing gifts, from Roger Cormarie's chocolates to Bart the Baker's bread. I need to introduce you to um, Claude. Now, Claude's the uh, truffle man, and he's got a really fantastic little dog called Sapel. Dick. Mustique. 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 <laughs> 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 Michelle the painter. Yes. <laughs> now, these two ladies nearly killed me. Insofar as they sat there and poured themselves a glass of blood oh. about that much. <laughs> Ah, oui, oui. Mais ça, c'est pour moi. The entire family's helped cook and serve a sumptuous French meal. You get the beans, and I'm going to sit down and enjoy some okay, papa. dinner with my friends. Hello, Johnny, how is it? Hey! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you Sept fois plus cher. Je veux dire merci à tout le monde pour votre mm, hospitality, generosity, um, le temps, uh, friendship. What's friendship? Ami amitié. Amitié. Et en anglais, je veux dire à tout le monde, cheers. Cheers. The last day at La Garrie has finally arrived. After a year in France with his family, far from the stresses and strains of chefing, John feels a changed man. Now it's time to say goodbye to another old friend. Bonjour. Bonjour. Je suis parti en Angleterre. À bientôt. Et j'ai besoin avant mon Diane. Oui. Et je fais juste, écoute, juste 10 000 kilomètres plus. Ouais, mais que que vous avant d'ici. À 1 000 kilomètres. Qu'est-ce que vous avez fait avec cette voiture Mais ça a pu la la chèvre et le canard là. Oui. He said it smells of ducks and goats. It does not. That's what, and it's going to take a lot of money to clean it all up. Then we're not going to sell it. He veut pas. He pas. Pour 200, c'est pas, c'est pas assez. Should, should we split the difference? Come on, Charles. I've done the deal. Daylight robbery. 300 euros. Huh? Dad. You yeah. Did the deal. Yeah. Say goodbye. So why did you? It's been a good deal? car, though, hasn't it? Ali, huh? Ali. Why did you make the deal, Dad? Because we've got to sell it, you know we have. I didn't want to sell it either. There have only been a few occasions where I've laid all my knives out in front of me when I've changed jobs and put them away. It's sad. It's, it's something that you don't do. You know, you use your knives every day, you throw them around all over the kitchen, and it's not until you know that it's time to go or you're leaving somewhere, as, it, as in this case, I'm leaving France, that I realise it's over. It's a bit hard to believe that we're all going home. It's like the other day we just came out here. We've had 
a real giggle with certain things and yeah okay we had lots of horrible weather to begin with and everybody feeling a bit miserable but if they hadn't felt miserable I suppose you wouldn't understand how great you'd feel when everything was going well. Dad, you Olivia, you pack them up, you pack them back. No, because you needed them. They're your books. You you well, why does everybody in. keep giving everything to me? There's my Kessel medal. I think I might wear this. Dad, if you wear that, you'll look like an idiot. What we've done here has been great. It's sort of made us all stronger as a family. Kim and I are stronger together. It's made us re-examine our values. We can at least go back to England and say France for us was pretty much everything. For me, I just really like to keep the closeness that we've all found together. I think really for John, he's had to sort of share the parental responsibilities out here, which has been great for me because, you know, it was always bad cop, good cop, and I was the bad cop because, you know, you've got to go to bed yeah, now. Yeah, and I've and done all the cooking. You've done most of the cooking. But, uh, yeah, so that's been good as well. I've done all the cooking. What do you mean? Some of it. Well, you made a roast once. <laughs> Actually, she makes really nice roast potatoes. That's the only thing he ever credits me with. Yeah, there's nothing else to credit. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think for me, it's just... It's... Being re, you know, rediscovering each other. I feel like I've fallen in love with John all over again. Everything's all together here. It's just a case of the kids getting in the car. Okay. Well, let's go then. I've got my passion back. Cooking is great, and cooking's going to be fantastic from now on. But family's going to be first. Will I regret leaving France? Well, I haven't left France yet and I already regret it. I actually love France. I love the French. I love the way of life. I love wine. I love food. I love the importance they put on food. So, you know, I, I'm going and I'm hoping one day I'll come back. I know what I'm giving up. If I can recreate 50% of what I got here back home, then that should be enough to keep me happy the rest of my life.